switch it up. So let's say if I want to take the square root of 9 and the square root of negative 9. Well, a lot of mis common misdeception is some students say, oh, the square root of 9, right? That's going to be positive 3. And then they say, we're just dealing with the positive value when the square root. When I have the square root already up here, I'm just going to assume the positive value. So they say, oh, well, that's 3, right? And that one, then that one has to be negative 3. But is negative 3 times negative 3, does that equal negative 9? No. So that's incorrect. So how can our, how can our knowledge of um, imaginary numbers help us solve this? Because here's why we use imaginary numbers. So far in our, in our knowledge, we can take the square root of 9. But we cannot take the square root of a negative number, right, in the real number system. So what we do is we created our imaginary number system to help us solve this. So therefore, I can rewrite this as negative 9 times, I'm sorry, positive 9 times negative 1. Right? Don't you guys remember when I split them up that last class period? And then you can break that up into the square root of 9 times the square root of negative 1. So by using our imaginary number system, do we now know what the square root of 9 is? Of course, Zach, we knew that was 3, right? And then the square root of negative 1, Ashley, we wrote that as i. So therefore, we can simplify it just like that. Cool? Amazing, right? right. Why do we need imaginary numbers? For solving problems that we can't solve in the real number system.